How's it going everyone? I'm Al, and welcome back to another match straight from I Am Karavitze. First up, it is the Tal Terran, my boy Gumiho. I don't know if he knows that he's my boy, but we'll go with it. His opponent is Demawa. It's showtime. Uh, apologies if my German is horrible and I said that incorrectly, but... This is why I like Gumio. Look at this SUV. He is floating across the map and he's building a good old barracks. So it's going to be a nice old proxy barracks. Uh, quick ass. Alright, take notes people, take notes. All the Terran players out there, take notes. This is how you climb the ladder. At least I hope so. Unless Showtime, who is known to be a defensive Protoss player, just, um, just counters it. Which, which could happen. He, he, he's possible, it, it's possible that that happens. So, the map is Ancient Cistern, uh, translated uh, roughly to Old Toilet. And yes, I'm going to continue making that joke until I get tired of it. And because I'm about like 12, uh, mentally at least, that's not going to happen soon. <laughs> Alright, so, let's see. There comes the Cyber Core. And... It's a tech lab. So this is not your usual cheese. This is going to be a little bit of Marauders. I like uh, I like the Marauder cheese. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Factory is building at home. Okay. Showtime. He's not scouted. He's going scoutless here. Yep, there it is. Marauders. That's going to be for concussive shells coming up soon. There it comes. Um... Yeah. Is is he going to have anything to deal with this? What's the tech structure? I think it's very important as to what the tech structure is going to be. We should be seeing it about now. Cybercore has been finished. It's going to be a Stargate. Yeah. Uh, two. Well, well, one more order out already. It's going to be a Hellion as well. Hellion Marauder. Oh, yeah. Not something you see every day. Here goes the Adept. Here does not go the Adept. Gonna send the Shade across. And here goes the Marauders. Bunker's gonna be built up here. There we go. Start hacking away at the pylon. They're just gonna walk straight up the ramp to the main base. Yeah. What do we have? Pylons. Here comes the SCVs. There's nothing. Showtime has nothing. Now, Marauders are not the quickest at killing workers, that, that is true. But uh, that does not make them weak by any stretch of the imagination. This Hellion didn't get too much done. Trying to get a couple of good uh, shots done on those probes. One Marauder does get uh, cornered, so it's going to go down. But that's a lot of workers that are going down so far. The Bunker has finished as well, which means that Gumio is in a good spot. He's also getting Cyclones. And the Cyclone upgrade. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's full committing to this one. Now, the Oracle is a good decision because nothing in Gumio's army can shoot up. Yep. Well, I mean, once the Cyclone comes out. Oh, I love that little trickery. So, he uh, took one Marauder out, put the other one into the um, bunker. Yeah, but what are you going to do against this? These Marauders are very good. <laughs> Landing a mule. Oh, Gumiho. Oh, Gumiho. We love the way you play. Here comes a um, Void Ray. That's going to help. But with the uh, with Psychonaut, suddenly a Void Ray is not as scary anymore. Gumiho has already started sending his barracks across. He's quite happy with the damage that he's done. Go, mule, go. Aggressive mule just dies instantly. It's gonna recover the bunker, and I would say, I would say that's a great success. Oh, okay. This is two marauders there. It's gotta be careful here. Run, cyclone, run. Or drive, drive quickly. Come on, Thomas the Tank Engine. It always makes me think of uh, Carbot's um, cyclones. It's got the big choo-choo face on it. Getting a bunch of barracks behind this. He's keeping up with the Cyclones. 
the foreign gas. Me, that's that's all good. So there is going to be a bunch of yeah reactors. That's marines. It's going to be a huge amount of marine production. But if we look at those losses, yep, I think Gumiho uh, he did what he needed to do. So here goes the cyclone army, and is there going to be anything to stop them? I don't think so. The Robo is on the way, but that Robo is that's not going to finish in time to stop these. I mean, what's on the ground here? Oh yeah, game's done. Honestly, game's done. These guys are going to roll in, right? Come on, in your roll. Come on, give me a, in your roll. SCV goes to its death, because that was necessary. And there we go. Okay, nice force field, I like that. But yeah, here we go. Break the pylon. And now we start attacking. Yeah. Attacking the Nexus again. I don't know if Showtime's got any answer to this. He's actually trying to take a little proxy base here. Uh, which I like. I think that's a very good idea. But... Yeah, I think the damage has been done. Mind you, that being said, the work accounts are pretty even. Army? Not so much. Because Gumio is attacking now with these two Cyclones, but actually he's got a lot left at home. And with this army that, uh, yeah, GG. Showtime just didn't have anything to counter that. Nice one there by Gumio. Alrighty, and here we go for game number two on the map Grezvan. Which has a horrible name, but as far as I understand, actually made for a lot of good, uh, good games. It's turned out to be one of those maps that we just end up getting a bunch of good ones on. So we'll see if this one is. So Gumia obviously taking the first one of this best of three series. And it's up to Showtime now to come back into this. Yeah. I like what Gumio did there. That was a fun little build. I know I'm showing a lot of cheesy games and not necessarily the super long macro ones. But it has a little bit of fun with cheese, right? That was a very aggressive push. I like what he did with the Cyclone follow-up. I actually think that was a really good idea. Because if he'd just gone into normal play, I think it would have been very easy for Showtime to get himself back into that game. But because of the the way that the Cyclone works and being able to you know, outpace everything that Showtime had and get rid of the Void Ray, that just left Showtime with, with nothing. So yeah, I like that build. For this game, Gumio is building his barracks in his main base, so nothing too crazy. It's also only one gas. If it was a second gas, we would have seen something more aggressive. Um, yeah, there comes the cyber course. It looks like Showtime's going to play his distinctive style of just being a macro defensive Terran. Ah, uh, he's not a Terran. He's a Protoss player. Here comes the Reaper out. Yeah, natural on the low ground. Nothing out of place. Showtime's just trying to get a couple of pylons up just to make sure he's got some good vision because he knows uh, that Gumio's got a little bit of a reputation for doing strange and dirty things. Yeah, this one's actually so chilled now. It's a chilled start compared to that quite an action-packed first game. Yeah, I've been enjoying these games. I've been enjoying seeing the new maps. I've been enjoying seeing these players again. Uh, yeah, I've got so many that I want to cross. It's like, oh, I want to cross them all at once. Um, I'm so excited to do some Dark games. Because Dark... I love the way Dark plays Zerg. I really do. I think he's such a free-flowing Zerg player. It's a pity that he didn't get a little bit deeper into the tournament. I mean, I can't say that. He got to, what was it, quarters or semis? Quarters. You know, he did well. A and he got taken out by Hero, who, I mean, Hero is very good. Um... Anyway, talking about completely unrelated things here. Showtime also is very, very solid Protoss player. He's up there with the best in Europe um, in terms of Protoss. Gumio, I, I just love watching Gumio play. I think Gumio is one of the more exciting players in the world. And it's just because he does things differently. He's very good at his macro and micro and, you know, the normal stuff that he needs to be at. But it's his strategies, his odd little strategies that always makes him quite fun to watch. But yeah, like a game like this, he's just going to go straight into normal macro. He's going to be happy with it. And just play out a normal bio-based army. 
I haven't seen him play a lot of mech lately, so I really, I would like to see a little bit of mech out of Gumeo. Ooh, Adept's gonna follow the Reaper, but might get it. Reaper's gonna jump up the ledge, yep. Hmm, <laughs> try follow me now, boring. Meanwhile, Showtime's just keeping an eye on what's going on. Here's the starport. It's the reactor on the factory, so are we gonna see a couple of widow mines, perhaps? Here comes the alien, here comes the Reaper. Alien's gonna go straight into the main base, be like, Hi, roasty. Toasted probe. I almost said marshmallow. Well, I mean, they are like marshmallows. Gets two probes. Gets two more probes. That's some good control there. Very nifty stuff. He does manage to keep it alive. Also gets a, ni a nice scout out. And... Yeah, that's not a fight that's ever going to end very quickly. Five workers going down. Yeah, good job here by Gumio. Good early game harassment. He's still behind in workers, but again, Terran can be a little bit behind, obviously, because of those. Lemuel. NG Bay is going to want to go into upgrades. We see the Robo and the Twilight. So I'm expecting a little bit of blink from uh, Showtime. He's got his two oracles out. He's going to use them to scout around, keep an eye on the map. Try not to get hit by a bunch of marines as soon as they travel into the main base. Good vision there from Gumio to see that coming. Um, good kind of like forward thinking. But Showtime's a... Ooh, I reckon if he dived now he could have gotten... No, he's getting some damage done. The marines reaction is a little bit slow there from Gumio. Marines are going to stem in. They're going to try to get some shots off. But that's four workers. Four workers is nothing to sneeze at. Same time, here's a small little army. Gumio does this. He does this so much. He moves this odd amount of units across the map. Like in one of the games, he loaded up a tank, a Hellion, and two Marines into a medivac. Like, what kind of drop is that? But it's Gumio and it works for him. Getting rid of the Spylon could be pretty interesting. Showtime has a decent army right now. Ooh. That gets rid of a lot. That's got the Stargate deactivated. Not that it's being used, but the Gateway and a single Warp Gate as well. At the same time, the rest of the Terran army is on the way. So far, there is no splash yet. Ooh, there goes the Cyber Core. That's serious. Showtime hasn't got charged yet, and he can't get uh, Stalkers. Okay, he should have enough right now. The Widowman's going to help out a lot. Widowman's obviously deal great splash damage. But yeah, Gumia's waiting for the rest of the Marines to arrive. And there he goes, marching forward. Tries to get rid of the pylon. Beautiful. That means no row. Uh, never mind. There's a backup. Ooh, good Widowman hit there. Trying to be very aggressive. Okay, that was the second Cyber Corp build. Uh... Gumia's army is very decent, but getting very low. I think Showtime's going to be able to defend this. I say that with the Medivax healing, that's a lot of workers going down. And these are gas units that are being traded for Marines. Ow! That Widow Mine was not ideal. That one hit uh, Gumia as, as hard as it did. Oh, good little micro. As hard as it hit Showtime. Oracles did go in, try to get something done. Not too much could be happening for them. The Robo needs to be rebuilt now, which means that uh, Showtime's still trying to find his source of Splash. Without Splash, the Terran army is pretty scary. Gumio at the same time loads up a bunch of Widow Mines and sends it out for the strangest Widow Mine drop timing ever. Maybe not ever, but you know, it is a pretty strange one. Ooh, Oracles almost get caught out. Okay, now that there's a couple more Marauders in the in the army, it's going to help out. They just add a little bit more tankiness, a little bit of punch to that army. Upgrades, plus one shields, or whatever that is. Armor, for uh, the infantry armor. Okay, plus one weapons is on the way now. The forge has only now started for... Oh, oh. Okay, there goes an oracle for free. But yeah, plus, or the, the Fortress just started for Showtime. So he's, uh, 
He's a little bit behind in that department. He's going to be behind in upgrades at least. Now Protoss players do tend to just go for the attack upgrades. Okay, the Widow Mine was dropped here. Not too much that's going to get done. Yeah, Showtime's defending that one while he's just splitting his probes. But he needs a little bit of vision. Okay, there comes the Oracle. Hey, you still got to deal with it. You got to deal with it, Showtime. Kumio trying to sneak that bad boy out of there. He's doing a good job. Run, Widow Mine, run! Okay, here comes the Terran Army once again. There goes the Oracle. Fresh Disruptor does not get a decent hint. So if Kumio micros correctly, he could have a good engagement over here. A couple of nice force fields. Zealot's going to jump onto the bulk of... Or not the bulk. A couple of these units. Kumio did some good micro to pick them up. He's just going to keep kiting back. And just picking off as much as he can. Supplies pretty even. Showtime a little bit ahead in workers, but Gumio's ahead in army. Quite drastically in army, actually. Yeah, I like this. I think both players in a reasonable situation. Gumio is obviously up in upgrades. Um, we do see extended thermalons as well as a Colossus on the way. I think that's always nice. Just to have the combination of Disruptor and Colossus just to split and spread the uh, the splash damage so that you get the constant splash damage from the Colossus and then obviously the big butter boom hits like that um, except from a disruptor okay there's the disruptors cooldown gone down yeah Kumi I think you can do some damage here he's trying not to overcommit oh, that's a big Protoss army though the same time he's gone up to his fourth base which means that he's up one base of showtime which is obviously not where showtime wants to be what's the next step of the plan for showtime is he just going to keep going for robo units with uh, gateways okay i'm up for that oh i missed a big explosion i'm gonna go back for this one i'm gonna go back one more here we go one more Sorry. Okay, here comes the sneaky medevac. Oops. Dropping. Ooh, Showtime does not see this. And boom. Boom. Ouch. Ouch. That's a lot of damage from these Widow Mines. And nothing really to defend it. So he loses them. And doesn't see them coming. Again. Does he just go in again to drop this? This is, by the way, where these two are busy battering each other. Where's that? Where's that medevac now? Okay, so the army starts moving up. Here we go. Drops again. Okay, his reactions are a little bit better this time. Boom. Yeah, so just one more worker goes down. Picks up that whatever. What a mine. He's going to move it across. Retargets it and gets a whole bunch of probes. Good targeting there with the mine. Uh oh. Okay, Disruptor's gonna come to save the day, but at the same time, here comes the Terran army. The bio army's coming at the top. They're gonna get rid of that Nexus. Try to retreat from this army. Actually, try to jump on some of those stalkers. Dealing decent amounts of damage. Gonna pick up and fly away before any Disruptors can cause nonsense. Yeah, these dead zones are very helpful for the Terran player. Ghosts are already out. I think Kumio has got himself a nice little lead right now. Showtime is down on work. It's not a place where the Protoss wants to be. And this uh, this game is quite scrappy. And I think uh, that's where Kumio would prefer it. He'd prefer to have Showtime out of his element. Um, okay, Kosa is in the hard shockwaves done. Not yet. It's actually not even being researched. But those are two good EMPs on the bulk of those Zealots. Yeah, now you got to be careful with the Zealots, because one Widow Mine can deal absolute devastation to the army. The rest of the army is trying to cut off reinforcements, doing a good job. Everyone's going to meet up now, and there's going to be a big engagement here in the middle. Spreading out, that's very good, obviously, against the Colossus. Big Disruptor, 
Disruptors do get picked off. Gumia has got a good army going forward here. And now it's just Colossus left. He's going to push onto this Colossus and he's going to get rid of every single one. GG is called. Gumio with a very swift and merciless 2-0 over Showtime. Oh, I just realized my score is wrong. Sorry, it was meant to be Gumio 1-0. Just, just ignore that. Pretend it doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a nice game to cast. Uh, if you did, make sure to like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more StarCraft content. Thank you so much for watching. For all of the support, I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.